what's up everybody if you watched my last video you know that I'm on a three month mission to get my body back into shape and to boost my overall productivity let's go Today I'm going to be going through my overall eating philosophy and sharing with you the specific diet that I'll be using for most of my meals and also covering some of the pain points that I might come across and how I can possibly overcome them. Now I want to be very clear, I'm not a nutritionist or a doctor or a licensed healthcare professional and I'm not prescribing anything to you. I'm simply sharing with you what I think will work best for me based on my own experiences with my body. Choosing a diet can be a daunting task because there are so many different diets out there that are backed by specialists that sometimes seem to contradict each other. And I'm not gonna go through all those different diets, partly because it would be a lot of work to do so, but mostly because I think that each one of these diets does have some level of validity to them. If you look at different cultures across space and time, you'll realize that where they lived and how they lived often dictated what their diets would look like. And their diets varied. The crux of what I'm saying is that the body is an amazing thing capable of surviving and thriving in all sorts of environments. And today, in modern society, we are extremely privileged to be able to drive to our nearest supermarket and basically pick out what we want to eat that day. At the end of the day, in my opinion, uh, the most important thing is figuring out something that you can stick to that has an overall positive effect on your body and that will help you to reach your goals. Let's start with the things that I do look for in a diet. I look for things like simplicity, flexibility, how it affects my stomach, how it affects my concentration, energy, mood. Uh, however, if I do start a diet and I start to feel weak and experience some other minor side effects, I won't stop my diet. I'll actually keep going because your body needs a few days to adapt to the new intake. For example, it's not uncommon for people who cut out carbs from the diet to feel weak over the first few days. In my experience doing the keto diet, it took me a few days to almost a week to get my energy levels back up to a consistent level. But if symptoms persist, I may look into possible deficiencies or surpluses in my diet. And if need be, I might incorporate a multivitamin or some sort of powdered greens into my diet that will be able to fill up the nutritional gaps. So what is my diet for the next three months? I would probably describe it as a flexible carnivore diet where I will be sticking to mostly fish and meat. I'll probably throw in some vegetables and I will have the flexibility to eat whatever I want on a couple of days. I'll be sticking to one meal a day which is something that I've been doing for the past couple of years and on top of that I will be doing two day fasts once a month. There are four major issues that I need to address when it comes to my diet. Number one. As I said, I've been sticking to one meal a day for the past couple of years and honestly, it's been great. However, uh, one of the problems with eating one meal a day is that you do get very hungry and the tendency to overeat is unavoidable, at least for me. Also, my physical activity over the past year has been very low and although I do eat just one meal a day, it still may not be justifying the calories, especially if I'm overeating which might explain why I haven't really lost weight over the past year. But now that I'm exercising at least three mornings a week, I should see some sort of weight loss, especially if I control my portions. So how will I control my portions? The first thing is to make sure that I get a light and easy snack if I ever feel myself losing energy or getting super hungry throughout the day. And when I say light, I mean light, like half of a triangle kimbap from the convenience store or a slice of bread from the bakery. It might not feel like a lot, but once it is inside your belly, you'll definitely feel better. And in my experience, it should help to curb the desire to overeat come dinner time. The second strategy is to make sure that I'm cooking most of my meals. And when I portion out the ingredients for each meal, to keep it on the smaller side. That way, if I get hungry later, it's too much of a hassle to cook again, especially if your meat is frozen. Number two. 
This is especially important since I started working out at 6 a.m. in the morning. After a heavy workout, it's not uncommon to feel depleted. And by the time I'm done, it's only 8 o'clock in the morning, which means I still got the whole day ahead of me. And I need to keep my energy levels up so that I can be productive throughout the day. However, if I only eat one meal a day, and that's at dinner time, there's a very good chance that I'll be low on energy and that I won't be in a good mood for most of the day. So my workaround is to portion my dinner into two smaller meals, one of which I can eat in the morning after my workout, or if I'm not too hungry, I can probably just have a light snack, grab a coffee, and usually that'll do the trick. Number three. I, I don't have a good answer for this one. Uh, no matter how hard you try, sometimes you just feel lazy. And um, you know, you might have a big day. You come home or you're on your way home and you don't feel like cooking. So you get some takeout or maybe you go home and you order in. And also because you're so hungry, at least for me, I usually end up ordering two portions. In these situations, I usually deal with it in one of two ways. The first way is just to allow myself to be lazy and I'll just pick up where I left off the next day. Often I tend to overeat and so I feel fat and gross and I'll be more inclined to continue with the diet. The second requires some willpower, but what I'll try to do is to order something that I really want to eat. But instead, I'll make sure that I only order one portion of it. Number four. We are all social animals, which means that from time to time, I need to leave the den to engage in social activities like grabbing dinner and drinks with friends. And I should, and you should too. Don't stay in your room all day just watching YouTube and Netflix and playing games and being all antisocial. Go out and meet people and socialize. It's such a huge part of the human experience. So if you're watching this, I want you to hit the pause button, wash your face, get dressed, go out and get your freak on. For me, I generally try to make plans in advance so I know when my extra cheat days will be. And leading up to that day, I will try to compensate by eating less. And it's surprisingly easy because I think my mind and my body, um, they are anticipating the joy of going out and having fun and eating something delicious. So uh, mentally, it's just easier to reduce your intake. One final note on fasting. Fasting is tough, but all the literature that I've heard and I've read from medical professionals leads me to believe that the benefits of fasting just simply outweigh the cost. The most difficult part of this for me is the low energy levels at the end of the first day leading into the second day, which means that I should definitely try to keep those two days as physically and mentally undemanding as possible. I will be allowed to drink coffee during the fast and if I'm in dire need, I will have some Greek yogurt in the refrigerator that will help me to get past my cravings. That wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening and I hope that some of this was useful to you and I wish you all the best on your journey to healthy living. Now I'm going to cook up these steaks and asparagus while I watch some of my previous videos on my channel.